everybody, welcome back to Meet Felicity. And I'm gonna, last time I read chapter one, and today I'm gonna read chapter two, heading. Late afternoon, sunshine, sunshine slanted through the window. Onto Felicity's back. Felicity squirmed. She had a terrible itch and didn't know how to scratch it. She couldn't reach it be with her left hand. Her right hand was inky because she was practicing her script. She jiggled her shoulders up and down. She held her breath and rubbed her sides with her elbows. She leaned back and wiggled her shoulders shoulder against her chair felicity my dear exclaimed her mother why are you twitching and fidgeting so i have the most awful itch mother said felicity i think my stays are laced too tight today they're so pinching and uncomfortable felicity pulled at her stays which were laced up her back like a tight vest miss Sis Mary Man shook her head and laughed. You think your stays are laced too tight every day, day, but you do grow so fast. Maybe you are right. Come here, my child, and I will loosen them for you. Thank you, mother, said Felicity. She sighed with relief as her mother loosened the laces. I've told you many times, Lizzie, your stays will not pinch you if you sit up straight said mrs merriman and they will not be uncomfortable if you move gracefully instead of of galloping around about she straightened felicity's cap they are now pretty one you are set to write fetch me your paper so that i may see your handwriting practice felicity blushed as she handed her mother the paper I haven't quite finished it, mother, she said. So I see, said Mrs. Merriman. The first few letters are very fine, but you lost patience when you tr when you go to the letter H. The rest of the letters go trip trotting all over the page and then turn into sketches of horses. She put the paper down and looked Felicity in the eye. Lissy, what am I to do with you you must learn to finish what you begin if you spend half as much time on your letters as you do daydreaming of horses you'd have the finest hand in Will williamsburg she sighed so she sighed go along to the well now fetch some water and scrub your hand mind you get the ink off Yes, mother, said Felicity. She turned to go, but stopped at the door. Mother, she asked, may I help Ben make a delivery? Yes, my lively girl, laughed her mother. I know very well there is no use trying to keep you inside when your mind is already out and wet and away. Thank you, mother, said Felicity as she flew out the door. Lissy, your hat, called her mother, but she was too late. Felicity was already half away to the well. Felicity's hand was still a little wet and a little inky when she rushed down the street to her father's store. Just as she got there, she saw Ben come out. He stopped and looked up the street toward the silver smith's shop, then down the street toward the church, as if he were not sure which way to go, Ben. Do you know the way to Mrs. Fitchett's house? Felicity asked. Ben shrugged. I'll find it. Ben shi Ben's shyness didn't stop Felicity. Come on, she said. I'll show you. Ben shrugged again. As you wish, he said. Then he was quiet. Felicity, Felicity didn't mind. It was so lovely to be outside. And this what was just the kind of of afternoon she'd love she loved best she could see a few leaves that had turned bright gold they were like small banners announcing that the summer's heat was ending and fall's cool weather was on its way felicity was supposed to be leading ben but ben took such long 
rides and she had to try to keep up with him. Finally, she lifted the hems of her petticoats so that she could take long strides to it. Felt wonderful to be able to stretch her legs. Oh, I wish I could wear breeches, she said. What? asked Ben. Breeches, said Felicity, groans, and petticoats are so bothersome. I am forever stepping on my hem and tripping unless I take little baby steps. Small steps are supposed to look ladylike, but I can't get anywhere. To this is a terrible bother and reaches at leg on your legs. Are you free? Can you can straddle horses, jump over fences, run as fast as you wish. You can do anything. Ben didn't answer, but he shifted the sack of oats to his other shoulder. Now Felicity could see his face. It's very tiresome to be a girl sometimes, Felicity went on. There are so many things a young lady must do, must not do. I'm told the same things over and over again. Don't talk too loud, don't walk too fast, don't fidget, don't d dirty your hands, don't, don't, don't be impatient, Felicity sighed. It's very hard. You're lucky to be a lad. You can do whatever you like, Ben shook his head. I can't do whatever I like. I'm an apprentice. Oh, said Felicity. They walked in silence for a while. Then Felicity asked, are you happy here in Williamsburg? Happy enough, said Ben. I imagine you miss your family and friends. Back in Yorktown, said Felicity, and I'm sure they miss you too. If I loved someone, I could never let him go away from me. I would be too miserable and lonely, she glanced over at Ben. Maybe he was lonely. You'll be happier here when you have friends, she said. Aye, said Ben. Then he hid his face behind a sack of oats again. Felicity and Ben made their way along the, the, the dusty, wide main street of Williamsburg. It was not very busy this afternoon. The city was just beginning to wake up after the hot, sleepy summer. Mrs. Robe was welcoming some guests to her tavern. The milliner had opened the windows of her shop to catch the first fall breezes. Here and there, peeking out from behind a hedge or a fence, Felicity saw yellow flowers nodding their heads to welcome autumn. After they delivered the oats to Mrs. Fitchett's stable, Fitchett's stable, Ben said, I can find my way to Tannery and home from there. Here, Felicity kept right on walking. Mr. Nye has a horse, and I've a curiosity curiosity to see it she said felicity half expected ben to tell her to run along home but he didn't say anything sometimes i'm glad he's so quiet thought felicity she grinned to herself jiggy nice tattery was on the far edge of the town out where the neat fenced yards grew raged and pasture stretched off into the woods. Felicity could smell the tannery, tannery fats before she could see the tumbled down tannery shed. The fats were huge. Kettles full of yellow brown ooze made of full smelling fish oil or sow. Or beer. Mr. Nye soaked animal hides in them to make leather. Whoosh, said Felicity. The smell of the tanneries enough to make your hair curl. Aye, said Ben. The whole business stinks. Suddenly they hear angry shouts and the horses, frightened whinnies. Down, you hateful beast. Down, you save, savage, they heard Mr. Nye yell. 
For this, he ran to the pasture gate. He saw Mr. Nye in the pasture trying to back a horse between the shafts of a work cart. The horse was rearing up and whining. It jerked its head and pawed the air with its hooves. Mr. Nye was shouting and pulling on a rope that was tied around the horse's neck. I'll beat you down. I will, yelled Mr. Nye. I'll beat you. Ben caught up with Felicity and put, pulled her arms. No, I want to see the horse, said Felicity. She stood behind the open gate and stared the horse with wild eyes, eyed and skinny. Its coat was rough and matted with dirt. Its name and tail were knotted with burrs, but Felicity could see that it was fine was a fine animal with long, strong legs and a proud, arched neck. Oh, this tis a beautiful horse, whispered Felicity. Beautiful, Mr. Nye. And the horse both seemed to hear her at the same moment. The horse calmed and turned toward Felicity. That gave Mr. Nye a chance to tighten the rope around its neck. When the horse held the rope, it went wild again. Mr. Nye was nearly pulled off the ground when it reared up on its hind legs. You beast, Mr. Nye shouted. He glared at Ben and barked, help me, get in here and grab this rope. Ben darted into the pen and grabbed the rope with Mr. Nye, but the horse reared and pawed the air more widely than before. I'll beat the fire out of you, shouted Mr. Nye in a rage. He raised his whip to strike the horse. No, cried Felicity. At that, the horse took off across the pasture, dragging Ben and Mr. Nye through. Stay back, Ben ordered. No, I want to see the horse. The dust they had to let go of the rope and get up Mr. Nye waved his arms and yelled at Felicity, Get away with ya! You've spooked my horse, you bothersome shit of a girl. Shit of a girl? Felicity called out, You spooked the horse yourself, you know you did. Ugh! Mr. Nye snarled. He turned his red-rimmed eyes on Ben and growled, What are you doing here? I brought the bit of... Bit you order from Master Merry Man, Ben said. Mr. Nye held out his hand. Give it here. Ben stepped back. I'm to wait for your payment, he said. Get away with you, shouted Mr. Nye. Keep your blasted bit. That horse won't take the bit no matter. Go now, before I take my whip to the horse. Two of you. Hear me? Me? Ben turned to go, but Felicity backed away slowly. She couldn't stop watching the beautiful pasture. Oh, beautiful ho horse. It was running back and forth across the pasture, trapped inside the fence. Felicity, come along, said Ben. Felicity turned and followed Ben, but she did not even see the road in front of the in front of her. Isn't she beautiful, Ben? Felicity said. Isn't she a dream of a horse? Aye, agreed Ben. She's a chestnut mare, a blood horse. That means she's a for for though rough bread, doesn't it? said Felicity. Aye, it means she was trained to be a gentleman's mount, said Felicity. Ben, that horse is not bred to drag a work cart. She was never meant to belong to the likes of Mr. Nye, Felicity exclaimed. She mu she's much too fine. Oh, just once I'd love to ride a horse like that. She'd be too fast for you, said Ben. You'd never stay on her. She shook his head grimly besides that horse won't trust anyone after the way mr nye is treating her she won't let anyone on her back ever again that horse 
as God wishes. Christy heard what Ben said, but she didn't believe it. She see the look of frantic anger in the horse's eyes, but Felicity had seen something else too. Under the willness there was spirit, not viciousness, just as under the mud and burrs there was a beautiful reddish gold coat, as bright as a new pop copper penny. Penny, whispered Felicity. What as Ben? Penny, said Felicity. That's what I'm going to call that horse. She's the color of a new copper penny. It's a good name for her, isn't it? I ye said Ben, because she's an independent-minded horse. That's for certain. Call her Penny for her independence, too. Pen? Penny? Felicity, Felicity smiled. From then on, she thought of the horse as Penny, beautiful, independent, bright, shining Penny. Pen? Penny. By the time Felicity and Ben walked to the middle of town. The sun was melting on the horizon. They hurried along to Mary Man's house. Felicity Mary Man exclaimed her mother, Wherever have you been all this time? Ben and I stopped out at the tannery, said Felicity. And oh, mother, we saw the most beautiful horse. A horse? asked Mr. Mrs. Mary Man. It's Chicky Nye's new horse. I... Wacker said Mr. Merriman. Ben handed him the harness and bit. No, I didn't buy these things, sir. He can, can't control the horse enough to harness it. Tis a headstrong, independent-minded horse, a bright chestnut mare, and fast as the fire. How did Jiggy die come to... Have such a horse, asked Mrs. Merriman. No one knows for sure, said Ben. Mr. Nye says he won the horse in a bet from a man who found it straying in the woods. He says the man put a notice in the newspaper. The notice said that whoever lost the horse should come to claim it. But no one ever came that it's just Mr. Nye's story, though it's hard to trust his world. Felicity had never heard Ben talk so much. She was unsurprised surprised at all he knew. It's a pity Jakey got to ho hold of the horse, said Mr. Merriman. He shook his head. It will not end well, I fear. Felicity could tell by the look on her father's face that Penny was in danger. She made up her mind to go back to the tannery and see Penny as soon as she could. And that's it, everybody. Next time, I'm going to read Chapter 3, Jiggy Nice Threats. Bye, everybody.